Hello, welcome to Afternoon Adventures with the Chesapeake Public Library. My name is Miss Hannah, I work at the Greenbrier Branch, and today we're going to be talking about Native Americans. The Native Americans were the people that were here before people came over from Europe to settle. So, there are over 500 different tribes of Native American peoples that originated hundreds, even thousands of years ago, and are still here today. The Native American tribes were known for taking really good care of the planet and the lands where they lived. They believed in using every part of whatever they had to create different things to eat, different things for clothing, they would use different parts to make shelter, and they traveled, a lot of them traveled around on their lands depending on what the season was. So they were very in tune with what was going on around them. Today we're going to read a few books that talk about some of the ideas that these Native American tribes had, and those were called their legends. The Native American people used what is called an oral history to pass down their legends. And that means that people who knew the stories would tell everyone else around them about the story so that the history and the legends would carry on from one generation to the next. So we're going to read a few stories that have to do with those legends from Native American peoples today. But you can also go to the library and check out a bunch of the books that we have available at each branch. We're also going to do a craft today. We're going to do a weaving craft. Weaving was very important to the Native American people because that was how they got their cloth for clothes. And Miss Joanne is going to help us demonstrate our weaving craft today. And make sure you come by the Greenbrier Library to pick up your supplies. All right, let's get started. Fry Bread, a Native American family story, written by Kevin Noble Malliard. Fry bread is food, flour, salt, water, cornmeal, baking powder, perhaps milk, maybe sugar, all mixed together in a big bowl. Fry bread is shape. Hands mold the dough, flat like a pancake, round like a ball, or puffy like Nana's softest pillow. Fry bread is sound. The skillet clangs on the stove, the fire blazes from below. Drop the dough in the skillet, the bubbles sizzle and pop. Fry bread is color. Golden brown, tan or yellow. Deep like coffee, sienna or earth. Light like snow and cream. Warm like rays of sun. Fry bread is flavor. See beans or soup. Smell tacos, cheese, and vegetables. Delight in honey and jam. Rise to discover what brings us together. Fry bread is time. On weekdays and holidays, supper or dinner, powwows and festivals, moments together with family and friends. Fry bread is art, sculpture, landscape, portrait, our daily craft shared from teacher to student, a cycle of heritage and fortune. Fry bread is history, the long walk, the stolen land, strangers in our own world. With unknown food, we made new recipes from what we had. Fry bread is place, Alaska, Kansas, all the way to Maine, 
down to Delaware, on to Georgia, over to Oklahoma, Colorado, and California. Cities and lands we call home. Fry bread is nation. Abenaki, Apache, Arapaho, Ojibwe, Onondaga, Oglala, Sioux, Narragansett, Navajo, Nipmuc, Seminole, Shoshone, Sac and Fox. Hundreds and hundreds of tribes. Fry bread is everything. Round, flat, large, small. North, south, east, west, brown, yellow, black, white. Familiar and foreign, old and new, we come together. Fry bread is us. We are still here, elder and young, friend and neighbor. We strengthen each other to learn change and survive. Fry bread is you. This is a recipe for Kevin's fry bread. It has the ingredients listed here and the steps on the side. If you have the ingredients and you feel like making fry bread, give it a try. The Legend of the Indian Paintbrush, retold and illustrated by Tommy DePaola. Many years ago, when the people traveled the plains and lived in a circle of teepees, there was a boy who was smaller than the rest of the children in the tribe. No matter how hard he tried, he couldn't keep up with the other boys who were always riding, running, shooting their bows, and wrestling to prove their strength. Sometimes his mother and father worried for him. But the boy, who was called Little Gopher, was not without a gift of his own. From an early age, he made toy warriors from scraps of leather and pieces of food. Mm -mm, sorry. From an early age, he made toy warriors from scraps of leather and pieces of wood, and he loved to decorate smooth stones with the red juices from berries he found in the hills. The wise shaman of the tribe understood that little gopher had a gift that was special. Do not struggle, little gopher. Your path will not be the same as the others. They will grow up to be warriors. Your place among the people will be remembered for a different reason. And in a few years, when little gopher was older, he went out to the hills alone to think about becoming a man, for this was the custom of the tribe and it was there that a dream vision came to him. The sky filled with clouds, and out of them came a young Indian maiden and an old grandfather. She carried a rolled up animal skin, and he carried a brush made of fine animal hairs and pots of paint. The grandfather spoke, My son, these are the tools by which you shall become great among your people. You will paint pictures of the deeds of the warriors and the visions of the shaman, and the people shall see them and remember them forever. The maiden unrolled a pure white buckskin and placed it on the ground. Find a buckskin as white as this, she told him. Keep it, and one day you will paint a picture that is as pure as the colors in the evening sky. As she finished speaking, the clouds cleared and a sunset of great beauty filled the sky. Little Gopher looked at the white buckskin, and on it he saw colors as bright and beautiful as those made by the setting sun. Then the sun slowly sank behind the hills, the sky grew dark, and the dream vision was over. Little Gopher returned to the circle of the people. The next day he began to make soft brushes from the hairs of different animals and stiff brushes from the hair of the horse's tails. He gathered berries and flowers and rocks of different colors and crushed them to make his paints. He collected the skins of animals which the warriors brought home from their hunts. He stretched the skins on wooden frames and pulled them until they were tight. 
and he began to paint pictures of great hunts, of great deeds, of great dream visions, so that the people would always remember. But even as he painted, little Gopher sometimes longed to put aside his brushes and ride out with the warriors. But always he remembered his dream vision, and he did not go with them. Many months ago, he had found his pure white buckskin, but it remained empty because he could not find the colors of the sunset. He used the brightest flowers, the reddest berries, and the deepest purples from the rocks, and still his paintings never satisfied him. They looked dull and dark. He began to go to the top of a hill each evening and look at the colors that filled the sky to try and understand how to make them. He longed to share the beauty of his dream vision with the people. But he never gave up trying, and every morning when he awoke, he took out his brushes and his pots of paints and created the stories of the people with the tools he had. One night, as he lay awake, he heard a voice calling to him. Because you have been faithful to the people and true to your gift, you shall find the colors you are seeking. Tomorrow, take the white buckskin and go to the place where you watch the sun in the evening. There on the ground, you will find what you need. The next evening, as the sun began to go down, Little Gopher put aside his brushes and went to the top of the hill as the colors of the sunset spread across the sky. And there, on the ground all around him, were brushes filled with paint, each one a color of the sunset. Little Gopher began to paint quickly and surely, using one brush, then another. And as the colors in the sky began to fade, Little Gopher grazed, sorry, cut. And as the colors in the sky began to fade, Little Gopher gazed at the white buckskin and he was happy. He had found the colors of the sunset. He carried his painting down to the circle of the people, leaving the brushes on the hillside. And the next day, when the people awoke, the hill was ablaze with color, for the brushes had taken root in the earth and multiplied into plants of brilliant reds, oranges, and yellows. And every spring from that time, the hills and meadows burst into bloom. And every spring, the people danced and sang the praises of Little Gopher, who had painted for the people. And the people no longer called him Little Gopher, but he who brought the sunset to the earth. The end. This is the story of the Indian paintbrush, which blooms in profusion throughout Wyoming, Texas, and the High Plains, and has many stories connected with its origin. The story of the Native American artist and his desire to paint the sunset was particularly meaningful to this author, and so he wrote The Legend of the Indian Paintbrush. Hi everybody, this is Miss Joanne and today I'm going to talk about weaving as our craft. Um, you can come get all the supplies that you need at Greenbrier Library. And so what I did for you is um, I started the weaving for you on cardboard and you can even make your own loom at home. So what I did is I put cut little notches in the cardboard and then I strung the thread the yarn around and this is called the warp so if you ever hear that that's what these threads are called they're called the warp threads and they go up and down or I put them around the top so that you can hang it if you need to and the bottom and then the uh, threads that we weave in and out are called the weft threads which is a little silly strange weird word but they're called weft okay um, this one I finished, so I wanted to show you that it, what it looks like when it's done. And this one I'm working on, so I wanted to show you how to do some of this. So when you weave, uh, you always go in and out of the threads. And then when you go back in the other direction, you go the opposite, the opposite way. So let me show you what I did. So um, some of the tools that you may need at home if you want. 
I used a plastic fork. I'm gonna give you a popsicle stick and so you can weave in and out. You, if you have a, you can get a plastic knitting needle, a plastic cut. You can get a plastic needle that has a really wide eye at the bottom that is blunt at the top. That means that it's not really, really sharp. And you can get those too if you wanna do more weaving. And that also will help you go in and out of the warp threads. So let me show you what I did to weave in and out. I'm gonna tape a the yarn onto the popsicle stick. So we're gonna tape it on and that's just gonna secure it so that it doesn't fall off the popsicle stick. All right, and some of my threads, so I already did some for you. So I did some green at the bottom and I did some browns. And this one, if you look at it, I started over the thread and then I went under, I went over, under, over, under, over, under, over, and under. So now, and these, I did something a little different. I cut them off so there's gonna be a fringe on both sides. And you can do that too if you want to. So this is your um, weaving project. You can do whatever you'd like to do with it. You can buy more yarn um, and use different colors if you'd like but um, I'm gonna end up giving you the browns today from our branch. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to do this. So because I went over, this time I'm gonna go under. So over this, oh, oh, under, over, and then I'm gonna go under, over, under, over, under, and over. You wanna pull it through, and you wanna pull it slowly, and you wanna leave a little bit of a tail on the side. All right, so I'm gonna leave it like this. You don't, if you pull it too hard and too fast, this tail is going to come out and you're going to have to start all over again. So then you pull it down like this and the fork pushes the threads down so it's nice and neat. All right, so that's that. And then that row is done. Now we're going to go back the other way. Because it's over this thread, when I go back, I'm going to go under. I'm going to go under the thread, over the thread, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, and over. And you're gonna do the same thing. You wanna pull it, but you don't wanna pull it too fast and too hard. You wanna pull it until you pull it. And then you wanna make sure that you don't pull this too tight because if you pull this side too tight or this side too tight, it makes the threads, the warp threads go in like this and then your finished uh, weaving is gonna be like in a diamond shape. You wanna make sure that it stays nice and rectangled. All right, so I'm gonna do this. And then again, you can do it with a fork or you can even push it down with your fingers. Okay, so that's another row done. All right, and then again, same thing. You're gonna go under, over, under, over, under, over until you get all the way to the end. All right, pull it, make a little arch, and then you're gonna press it down. All right, so that's how we do our rows. Let me take this to the side. I'm gonna show you how to finish this off. Once you're done with your weaving, we're gonna cut the bottom thread. Okay, you're gonna take this off. You're gonna take the next loop off, and we are going to Cut this, and then you have to tie these strings together. All right, so you're gonna tie them. And normally I'm gonna do right over left and under. And then left over right and under. And if you need help with this part, please ask an adult, because some of this is hard. It's hard sometimes and the strings are a little short. Okay, so you're gonna do that across, you're gonna do it across the whole thing and that keeps this nice and secure. And then when you wanna take the top part out, you can take the top ones out and they're gonna make little loops. And then you can stick a straw or a piece of stick that you get from outside, you can stick that in through these loops. And I'm not gonna do that quite yet because I didn't finish tying off the bottom but you're gonna be able to stick it and then you can be able to hang it. 
All right, I did another one that I um, like this. So I, this is one that I used different colors. Um, and I also put a tassel on the bottom. So the bottom stitching here is called Raya Knots. And when you come to, the, to Greenbrier to pick up your supplies, if you want to do a fringe at the bottom, I can show you how to do that. It's pretty simple, um, but I will show you how to do the fringe at the bottom when you come in to get your supplies. All right, so that's everything for weaving. I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you soon. Bye.